Alrighty guys, welcome to part six of the Keep It Reads Ultimate Drift Guide with myself Jason and JB Rogers and 500 Flies here. We're going to show you how to do tandems today. Last course we did, part five, was on entries. This time, it's time to put all the skills from the course together onto putting tyres on doors. So on them tandems, get you ready for some competition. So before we get into it, Let's show you a quick example of what a tandem is, and then we'll get into the explanation. So for a lead, all you want, as you're learning, something nice and smooth, nice and wide, easy to chase, that's what the judges are looking for. And then come around to a smooth transition, so the person behind you can dive right in there. All right, so now you've seen the prime example from the REIT 34, and the almighty AU. We're gonna get into the basics of a lead and a chase, and then JB Rogers is gonna explain how it's done in car to tighten it up. Alrighty, so now that we've learned donuts, figure eights, how to entry and some transitions, we're going to go into tandem driving. We're going to focus on how to lead as a tandem driver. Jason's going to be chasing me. Now as a lead driver in a tandem, you don't want to be focusing too much on the person behind you. It's their job to follow you. You just need to focus on being smooth, predictable and keeping your transitions nice and clean and smooth. So we're going to do a run here. I'm entering the corner, I'm keeping it nice and predictable. Um, he knows I'm going to enter on the handbrake, there's no sudden movements across the track. Uh, so that, that does help to match each other's angle instantly. As we're coming through the corner, I'm nice and trying to be nice and wide in the car, nice and smooth and predictable. Make that transition sort of um, an emphasised transition so Jason knows when I'm going to make it, so he knows when he needs to jump in on me as a, as a chase car. <laughs> done our lead lap we're now going to do our chase lap um, what I'm looking for here I want to stay quite close to Jason match his speed on entry um, I'm sure Jason's going to use a handbrake entry to enter so I'm going to match that uh, just a single sort of motion into the corner uh, you don't want to be too far up on the lead driver so you want to sort of tuck in just just on the back quarter uh, where I like to focus as a chase is on the sort of on the front tires and going between what angle the front tires are and what's in front of the car so you can sort of see over the bonnet um, gives you a clear view of what's happening in front of the lead car um, and while also seeing any corrections the lead car is making so if there's any sudden steering inputs that look like a spin you can be prepared for that so we're going to do a little demonstration here <laughs> getting up too far on the lead car. If you get up too close on the front quarter panel, when he transitions, he's gonna cut you off. Um, in my chase, um, again, tucking in nice and close to Jason, matching his speed. Uh, a handbrake entry again, because I know what he's gonna do. We've sort of discussed on how we like to do this corner. Uh, so, handbrake entry, matching angle, not creeping up too much on the lead car. You don't want to lock yourself out. Key points I'm watching for, as I explained in the car, are the front wheels and over the bonnet. So I can see, I have clear vision of what's coming up and I can see any sudden movements in that steering angle. Now that I've touched on it, the best part about drifting is how different people perceive drifting in itself. It is a judge sport, it's a style sport. So I'm gonna pass you to Jason and see what he thought of our runs. Cheers, Mort. So from my view, you're a snowboard. What's going on, mate? So that's one of the things, I guess, when you get into competition drifting, you've got to be aware of the other cars that are actually driving. For the AU, being a slow boy, the 34, being a gripped up boy, you have to watch out for little things like, you know, slower entries, slower line, cutting in too shallow, which I did and I sort of cut myself off. 
So I gotta really make sure I keep myself at a slower pace, sitting behind the car, and really just trying to emulate what JB Rogers was doing. He might have had one, one good run in there, or I did sit behind, it worked out really nicely. And so that in itself is probably one of the biggest things about tandem driving, is driving with lots of different cars, getting used to what it's like to follow a fast car, slow car, and really hone your skills on chasing someone down. So that's enough for me and my point of view. I'll throw you back to Josh, and we'll quickly touch on a little bit of etiquette and things to watch out for before we close this out. Something we always try to tell our drivers at Keeper Reed, one is driver etiquette. Although it's not a hazard, if you tandem with someone and you chase them, it's common courtesy to then meet them at the start line and you lead, let them chase. But a major hazard we often see on the track is what we call death gap. Now death gap is when two cars leave the start line and then a third car has tagged on maybe 10 meters back. They're trying to catch up to those two cars in tandem. So what that means is often there'll be a speed difference. Often that third car just cannot see what's going on. Something similar happens with two cars in a lead and a chase. If there is a gap, if they're not close enough, it becomes a hazard. You always wanna make sure that you're within five meters of car width or just over. That's a good place to be. That way you're matching the car in front of you. You're not making a quick gain on what's happening in front of you. You always wanna stay in that five meter window, be matching the car in front of you at all times. If you are a third car and two cars leave the start line in front of you, do not wanna to try to catch up to them. You're better off backing off waiting for someone behind you and sort of going with them but by all means do not try and catch up to a tandem that's happening in front of you it's a terrible idea I don't want to see it at our track days all right so that wraps up uh, part six how to tandem the ultimate drift guide we do have the full course on our website keeperreed.com forward slash drift guide so make sure you jump on that and check it out keeperreed is all about taking it off the streets and on the track. We don't want to see any of you on the streets doing these illegal things. We've got track days ready for you if you're in Australia and throw down them skills in a safe environment. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Winton Raceway for letting us use this track and the skid pan to put this course together for you guys. If you want to check out what they do, they have test days, they do drift days, they even hold V8 supercars here. So thank you very much to them. So we hope you like this six part series. Make sure you go check out our other videos. We do have our daily and regular vlogs that we throw up with a lot of banter and a lot of good times. So make sure you go check that out. Like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.